Hello fellow modeling and tabletop gaming enthusiasts and welcome to this episode of the Mediocre Modeler Show. I am George. You may also know me as the Mediocre Modeler or Jolene, depending on where you're where you're coming from. So in this episode, we're going to take a little look and do a little bit of a, an out-of-box review for a game that I was introduced to at this past Adepticon, Adepticon 2023. And that is going to be Free Blades from DGS Games, based out of Kansas. Um, specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the Kazarik Forgers starter box that I picked up. This is a game that my wife and I actually signed up for a demo for. Uh, the whole reasoning behind signing up for this specific one is that when uh, registration day came around, I was looking for an event or a class, something that my wife and I could do together where I did not know anything about it, so that I could not hold anything over her and be the expert. So we were both coming into it with no knowledge of the game or how it played or anything like that. I, of course, am a gamer, I'm a painter, a modeler. She was just kind of along for the ride and for a free four-day vacation away from home. So, without any further ado, let's head on down to the bench and take a look. All right, and here we are. We've got the Freeblades Kazarik Forgers starter box. Now this is a box set that comes with the six figures pictured here. Uh, doesn't have any rules, but the really cool thing about Freeblades is that the rule book currently is uh, $10. It is a PDF, but it is also a living rule book. So once you buy the PDF of the rule book, uh, any updates, changes, or anything like that are automatically pushed to you. So you don't have to keep buying army books and new updated rule books all the time. So that is a pretty cool thing. It's also uh, uses an exploding dice system, as was to explained, as was explained to us, um, where if you have a specific target number where you're rolling, say, either a D6, a D8, D10, so on and so forth, the game uses all the way up to a, a D28. Uh, if you hit the the highest number on that die you get to keep rolling um, and add those add that amount to to the result that you're you're looking for um, so it's pretty cool um, again the rule book it's about 200 some pages but it does contain all of the essentially the army lists for all the different factions in the games and there are quite a few factions they've got quite a little quite a bit out there so we'll go ahead and kind of just take a look at what we got in the box here. And usually got the QR code there, DGS Games, all that legal information. And then here on the back, you get a little bit of a preview of what all this contains. So this takes place in the fantasy world of Phalon, which is a, sort of a high fantasy mythical world, again, with a lot of different factions. But the Khazarik are uh, the... Phalon representation of essentially dwarves. So tells you what you have here. We've got six figures. So this is a skirmish game. So the, the model count is pretty low, which is pretty nice. Um, this box itself was $50. Um, so, you know, a little less than $10 a miniature, but you don't have to buy a whole lot to add on to them. I mean, there are additional uh, characters and other uh, figures that you can add to you can add to the army, but or to the to the war band, essentially the free blade band, I guess. Um, but you get probably, I mean, this is probably at least half of the miniatures in the game. So we have our forge warden, hinterguard, field agent, cryomancer, quarreler, and explorer. And you can check all this stuff out by visiting dgsgames.com. Um, I am obviously not sponsored. I did pay for this out of pocket. I also did buy a starter for another faction and we'll possibly take a look at that uh, in another video so that's kind of all the stuff on the box so let's go ahead and start taking a look at what exactly comes in it so we have our six figures each one of them comes individually wrapped in bubble wrap along with a nice little sticky bubble wrap sack so this will be kind of like a, almost like a little mystery draw here um so we're going to have our first miniature here, and there's still a little piece in there. Not sure if that's a broken off piece or whatnot. But what we have here, and of course you have your 25 millimeter slot of base. Good old, good old style. This is actually our Cryomancer, 
which is sort of our, our caster or our, our wizard, essentially, for the faction. Each faction has very similar um, characters, but you can see it is white metal. Um, they are ex pretty well detailed. They're pretty well cast. I haven't looked at these terribly closely. Uh, this is actually probably the closest look I've taken of all of these figures so far. But the detail is pretty well done, and I have to say that at the, uh, the demo that we did, <clears throat> which was uh, my wife and I played as a team against a, a gentleman named John, who uh, was a great opponent, and we were aided by uh, a gentleman named Jacob, who was from the Kansas City area, who was uh, pretty strong in his knowledge of the game. So it was a really great demo. Um, but we played as the Kazarics, which is why I decided to pick them up. Um, were very, very well painted. I think they did an exceptional job. And there is a lot of detail that you can have a lot of fun with on this. So I'm looking forward to when I get the chance to start working on these. But this, of course, again, is our Cryomancer. And I just realized we have an axe or a pick or something in there. And another piece of some sort. And I'm sure we'll figure all of this out when it comes time for assembly. So minimal piece count. Again, a skirmish game was sort of a minimal model count, which being a heresy player and generally a games workshop player for most of my time in tabletop gaming is, is kind of nice that you don't have to have thousands of dollars invested. Uh, but at the same time, I am also getting into Conflict 47. So <laughs> yeah, there's another, another point sink. But I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. All right, so next up we have our field agent. And again, we have our nice 25 mil base who's got a nice, looks like a Matic or sort of a pickaxe kind of thing. Um, and our field agent, I'm not entirely sure what the role is, but kind of a, sort of a scout. Can move a little bit quicker, although I think most of the Kazarik have a relatively short movement, but that's fine, they're tough. They have pretty good armor and helps them out in combat. So the field agent is kind of a scout, doesn't have great fighting skills, but they're kind of they're kind of what you send ahead to try and grab an objective until the uh, the rest of your group can get there. But again, I think that's going to be a really fun model to paint up. And so the field agent, I believe, is just kind of a, a supporting character where you've you've got your heroes or your characters, and then you've kind of got some of your your followers, which are sort of the two main types of, of figures in uh, Freeblades. Check out our next figure here. Ooh, I think I know which one this is. So, all right. Yeah, this is the big boy. So this is actually our Forge Warden, who is essentially sort of our, our hero, our main leader character. And he is kind of a beast in combat. He's a little bit tougher to kill. Um, he kind of grants a few extra abilities to your army. He's got this nice, great, big war hammer here. Always great to see war hammers in actual usage. And then he's got a nice shield here to kind of give a little bit of a uh, protective bonus, which is, which is nice. And again, I mean, there's a little bit of flash here, but that's just the, the nature of casting anything really. But no, these are really well done. You can see a lot of the details, some of this sort of scale detail on his trousers there you know, in his beard, and then, you know, some of the detail on that cape, so, yep, so this is sort of the, the main big bad leader character of this, this band. They do have uh, dice sets to represent each of the factions. I did not get the Kazarik dice set. I got one for the other faction that we picked up, just because I thought it looked pretty cool, but again, we'll take a look at that when we get around to doing doing that faction, which it is kind of, you know, it's a little bit involved and complicated rule set. It's certainly no heresy rule set, but uh, it's going to take a little bit of trial and error to to learn it, but it was it was definitely a lot of fun to do. So what we have here is actually our Hinterguard, which is sort of a, a he's a fighter. Um, he's got some pretty good melee characteristics and does a good job getting into combat. Sorry if I kind of got out of focus there a little bit. But again, you can see some of the detail, and of course, he's got this great big hammer. It's always great to see. I love seeing that kind of thing. And I think I might have that the wrong way, actually. As a matter of fact, looking at the box art. Sorry if I keep going out of frame here. I'm still trying to get used to all this and doing this behind the camera. 
But as you can see there, again, pretty good, pretty good detail on that, and they they look like they're going to be a lot of fun to to paint up. Let's go ahead and put our hinter guard away. We've got two more figures to take a look at here. So we've got two left. We'll see. I think these are both sort of uh, follower characters, but they're also some very useful characters. So here we've got our explorer, which again is kind of like a uh, sort of a scout. Um, and they have some special abilities. <clears throat> Dressed up kind of like as though he's, he's climbing a mountain. He's got his, his ice axe here. I don't know how well you can see that, but he is actually smoking a pipe, which I think is uh, pretty cool. Being a fan of cigars, I definitely, I can appreciate that. So that is our Explorer. So that means last up is a character that, or not a character, but a figure that I certainly enjoyed in the demo. And that, of course, if you were keeping track, is going to be our Quarreler, which these guys are sort of your ranged combatants. Uh, you may have noticed this is the only ranged combatant so far. All the other ones were more melee. I mean, you get a little bit of range from your from your Cryomancer, your caster, but generally the, the dwarves like to get in close and personal. Uh, the cool thing about these guys is they are armed with a special crossbow that um, when you move a very short distance, you can fire twice with this crossbow, which is pretty cool. And it's definitely a, a pretty neat model. And yep, just kind of goes like that. And then he's got his little dagger for his close combat, but hopefully try and avoid that most of the time. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that is actually going to cover our uh, sort of out of box review for the DGS Games Free Blades Kazarik Forger's Starter Set. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed that look at the Kazark Forger starter box, as well as that quick little preview of the Free Blades rule Living Rulebook. I did forget to mention that as a result of taking or participating in the demo at Adepticon, we actually each, my wife and I, received a code for a free copy of that rulebook. But I would say it's definitely worth the $10. Um, and as well as we actually did get a bit of a discount when we went to go bought buy um our two starter boxes and dice, as well as a little extra pack for the other faction that we'll, again, we'll take a look at some other time. We did get a bit of a discount when we went to their booth at Adepticon, which, oh, that vendor hall is one of the greatest things. So uh, that will probably be a theme for uh, the foreseeable future is just reviews on a lot of the stuff that I picked up at Adepticon. There's some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, some of it's already been started. Um, you know, our, our very first video, our last video, we Talked about the Trenchworks M3 Scout car, which of course was something I picked up at Adepticon. There's a number of other projects that I just picked up at Adepticon that some have already been started. Um, some I'm not entirely sure what my plan is, but they were too cool to pass up. So if you uh, want to check out any of the work that I'm working on in the meantime, you can check me out on Instagram. I am at the Mediocre Modeler. No spaces, no periods, anything, nothing like that. Just at the Mediocre Modeler. You can also check out Mediocre Modeling Studios, again, on Instagram, at Mediocre Modeling Studios. Also on Facebook, the same name, as well as the podcast, the Spacemen with Guns podcast on Instagram, as well as Facebook. 
Um, and all the contact information and everything should be there. If you're looking for some commission work, I am taking the month of April off. That's kind of my refresh period. Normally it would be January, but this year things were kind of hectic. So I had to push it back until uh, returning from Adepticon. So I will not be accepting any new commissions until May. But if you're looking to get some work done, you can uh, check out Mediocre Modeling Studios, either on Facebook or on Instagram. And there should be a link to the link tree there, which should give you... Uh, the best way to get in contact, which is probably email, um, which is just mediocre modeling studios at gmail.com. So thank you all very much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, may your paints be thin, your brushes be pointy, and your dice be hot.